The 6.5 is on the road at HP Amplify 2024 here in Las Vegas, our second home. It's been an incredible show so far. It's really been the combination of making hybrid work better uh, with AI. Yeah, it has, and, and I don't know about you, Pat, but uh, Vegas is, feels like a second home, but right? uh, I'm not sure I'm, I'm prepared to make that, that commitment just yet. But yeah, it's been a very positive day here at Amplify. We've heard from some of the world's most prolific tech companies and their CEOs, and we're hearing a lot about, of course, the AIPC, but we're hearing a lot about the future of work, hybrid work, uh, sustainability. I mean, it's been, right. a, it's been a mix. It's been a really good uh, event so far. Yeah, we've had a lot of great conversations around AI in printing, around AI, uh, AI in, I'll, I'll call them, you know, standard AI PC notebooks. But hey, what about the developers out there and the developer ecosystem, the people who are actually building these incredible innovations uh, that we're here, uh, that, that we see today? It's not just done in the cloud, they are done on very high performance, advanced compute solutions, AI workstations for short, and to have this conversation and do the double click on it, we have Jim Nottingham. Great to see you, Jim. Good to see you, thanks for having me. It's great, like twice in two days, we had yeah. dinner together, had a great conversation. Yeah. You're working on some great stuff, it's super exciting. Yes, yes, sir. I think I have the best job in HP. It's uh, super fun, uh, you know, mostly because of our may. customers. I had to think about that a little bit. It's a great job. Yeah. yeah, we had Enrique on earlier, and you know, he said he has the best job at HP. I well, think so. that's a good thing to have. As I long think if as everyone that works here thinks it's the best job. It seems it worked out well. So, so Jim, you made a couple of announcements about AI accessibility going back to last yeah. year in October. Tell us a little bit about what's new here. How is that process going of making AI more accessible and democratizing AI for everyone? Yeah, great, great question. So we did make some announcements. You know, the AI workstation that uses the new GPUs that are really uh, targeted at helping people create their own private models, fine tuning, um, the retrieval augmentation, a great, great product and also the AI Studio, which is a development platform that really lets teams of developers, AI developers and data scientists, work on a common platform across any infrastructure, local workstation client, in the data center right. cluster, in the cloud, or in the super cloud. And what we're announcing this week is we've really completed a full integration of all the uh, NVIDIA's NGC tool suite, their pre-trained models, the Nemo framework, and uh, that really significantly streamlines the, the AI creation workflows. And then we're also announcing, really we're bringing all these together. So we've announced an, the AI Creation Center, which takes our AI workstation with the um, AI Studio platform and all the right. NVIDIA tools, and we're adding to it uh, other third-party tools that lets our customers select, manage, and very importantly, validate their LLMs, their foundational models that they use for training. So this, this you know, AI creation center is really a turnkey solution that um, is very affordable. Right. And it really enables um, teams to very quickly deploy and start to create their own models. Yeah, this is super exciting, and it, it really hits on a couple uh, key industry trends. So first of all, customers are look, not looking for something more than a, just a bag of parts. They mm -hmm. show up and hey, you figure out the rest. You figure out the software, you figure out the process. And I feel like HP is really going a step further in pulling all that together. And the other part is uh, fine tuning of models that quite frankly, when it comes to enterprise use, is exactly, right, it's really a trade off between, hey, do I fine tune a bigger model? Mm -hmm. Do I create uh, my own smaller model, and then how do I infuse it with data that's on-prem, maybe through RAG, that's, that's one way you could exactly do that. Right. So super exciting. Uh, Z by HP AI Studio, right, still right, uh, developing that. I'm curious, yeah. what's been the feedback so far here uh, at the show? So, well, in the early access program, the reason we're doing the early access program is to get a lot of that feedback. And definitely the feedback from the show has been very positive. I've been getting bombarded with a lot of follow-up questions because people are I'm not surprised. They have a vested interest in creating these, these capabilities within their companies to right. really streamline 
their business operations and transform their business operations. So posi very positive here. In the early access program, I would say the results have been excellent. Yeah. Um, and I'll start with really the top two. First, the integration and the co-engineering we did with NVIDIA, that's been a big hit. Everybody just says right away, whoa, having this integrated, it really streamlines the process. That is a great add. And number two, the collaboration capability and the ability to work from different locations you know, on different platforms yes. on a shared project is saying, hey, that's very compelling. Now on, on the bad, I would say the good news is, is the bad is kind of what we expected and why we did the program, which is it's really more of the tactical stuff like, hey, is this really working the way it should? Hey, I was missing this file. Right. And, and so it's very positive in that we're getting kind of the feedback to really polish it before we go GA. I mean, you have to do that. I mean, you can't just crank some beta product out there when you're working on important stuff like this. Uh, big resource um, investment, of course, on your side, but also your customer's side, so that, that that's the smart approach here, yeah. for sure. And to, and to your comment, I think your comment was spot on about, um, you know, it's easy to, to sell a bag of parts, yes. or a toolbox, say, hey, here's the best toolbox, you know, Figure knock, it out. knock yourself out. Fortunately, with all the work we've done in data science, you know, for several years, we've been working with data scientists and we started creating solutions because in data science, um, as much as we love our products, it's not about the products because our customers need more than specs. Right. It's about the solutions and so we're learning from those solutions that we can really streamline and that's what led to these other things we're doing. Of course, we love our workstations, we're going to continue to make them great, but it's really broader in terms of the value that you need to deliver. I'd like to add a, uh, just ask a follow up on this. So a perfect architecture is where things that are done on the client side are done on the client side. Mm -hmm. Things that are done either in the big data center or the big cloud or done there and that work is synced so you can get yep. the right work done in the right place. Can you talk a little bit about how AI Studio works together through the combination uh, of that? Yes, absolutely. It's all about data management. And as you know, um, with the growth of data, I mean, the data is massive and it's accelerating. It's all about getting compute closer to the data and right. having the right compute with the right data at the right place at the right time. Right. So AI Studio really um, consolidates or, or gives you a common shared hub for how you manage that and it gives you the options to use different compute with the data, but still use the same project without having to reconfigure you know, your, your project. Right. That's been uh, part of the collaboration feedback that we got. It's been very positively received. That's great. So with what you're doing with Studio Lighthouse, it's clearly democratizing AI. Now, the Z workstations, you know, whether it's media, whether it's architecture engineering, these have been the workhorses. Mm -hmm. And of course, with all of the AI that's coming, how is AI coupling up with these big workhorses to revolutionize some of these industries? That, that is an excellent question. So um, I'm going to answer that with kind of four kind of big trends or challenges that we see across all of our traditional segments. And by the way, AI doesn't replace you know, those. So um, number one I already mentioned, it's the explosion of data. Okay, every segment, every customer, they're working with massive data. I mean, even just now on our, our breakout, like Wayante was uploading a file just for our presentation, right. 800, 800 megabytes. <laughs> so they're working with huge data. And then the data, you know, the data, the type of data, it's, it's moving all unstructured, which drives huge complexity into the workflow, okay? So workflows are getting more complex. Not only the unstructured data, but all of our customers are like the world's change makers. They're sure. like the most creative people on the planet and they want to push the edge and so the, their workflows are just getting crazy complex. And then last, and this was true when you were designing and selling PCs just like it is today, everybody wants to accelerate their outcomes. They want their products faster, they want more insights from the data faster, right. they want their movies to be created faster, their game, more games, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, those are the three kind of big trends that apply to every category. Certainly they apply to AI. 
AI is the other trend, and it's super important because A, it amplifies all of those other three, and, and B, because it is being used in all those other, other three. All of our customers are rushing, just like companies are rushing to, how do I use AI to streamline right. my operations? All these creative people are saying, oh wow, this is a cool, amazing tool, yeah. and they're figuring out how do I incorporate that into my workflows, which drives the complexity, drives the data, and, and so we're focused on all of those, and the solutions we're delivering today focused on data science and AI, they're going to enable us, and, and we've got some amazing, cool things in our pipeline, they're going to enable us to translate yeah. those capabilities to other segments. So are these, oh, sorry, are we going to? No, no, you, you know, Jim is so compelling that I just want to make sure, because rumor has it, He's in pretty high demand, so let's let's hit him with one more. But I think uh, I think I just want to make sure Jim gets uh, off to where he's trying to go. Yeah. So uh, just to maybe bring this to life, maybe some people who who don't know exactly what to do with a workstation. What are some of the verticals that that people should be considering if they're in, you know, product development, mm -hmm. manufacturing, architecture, construction? Is it classic like? 2D, 3D plus entertainment, are these the, the, hot, the sweet spots here? The, for sure, the ones you just listed, those are a large part of our market. Um, game developers, movie makers. Um, it's also true in healthcare. It's also true in you know, the space companies, SpaceX, NASA. Really all of the, all of the segments where people are re really pushing the boundaries. Right. They're changing the game. They're changing the way you, either the way you live or the way you work or the way you're entertained, they've got the complex workflows and it is all about the workflow. Yeah. And wherever they've got these complex workflows where they can get, they want that dedicated kind of one-on-one -on -one compute, super valuable. And in no case that I can think of do customers only work on workstations. So it is a hybrid compute world. They're right. working on workstations, they're working in the data center, they're working in the cloud. And our goal is to really make that more seamless and we've got a lot of cool stuff that's going to help customers make that more seamless. You know, it's funny as Jim's going through that, I can't help but to think, you know, we, I think we've gotten a little lazy in the industry and calling something pro. I feel like your stuff is like pro, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and, and I'm not saying that other stuff is unprofessional or yeah. unpro, but it really feels like hardcore, you know, my son's a developer. Mm -hmm. He needs to be using this. You know, he is uh, uh, basically creating chat bots, bringing an incredible amount of uh, uh, data, data in. And, you know, it's funny, a lot of students are using these gaming PCs uh, yes. to do this, but they're inadequate when you get into an enterprise, they have no manageability. You don't really have to work together or, you know, it's on a Git repository in, in the mm -hmm. university somewhere, but, uh, yeah, just, just had that fleeting thought, what you do is pro. Yes, for sure it's pro, and what's interesting is the line of what pro is, is shifting because of these trends. They're pushing right. the needs, demands for compute. So for example, between our consumer business, we have a lot of prosumers, we have influencers. These influencers are getting pretty sophisticated. They're making a lot of money, and they're using pretty sophisticated tools. Um, so they're moving up you know, they're moving up the stack and we want to enable them. Right. Just like all of our pro customers are, you know, becoming pro pro. I love it. Yeah, we saw it democratize with software. The hardware's enabled that, you know, we stream like a television show every week. Yeah. From our desktops or our PCs without a workstation. 10 years ago, you needed an Avid system or a major, you know what I mean? Like we're broadcasting each and every day off our phones. So it's crazy how far it's come. Jim, it's been great talking. Clearly, we need more time. I would love to talk with you guys anytime. Yes. I, I feel flattered that you had me here. Thank you. Aw, yeah. same. Back uh, at you. You guys, you guys are, are my heroes, and I really appreciate you uh, asking me to be here. Thank let's you. Let's do it again soon. Yeah, let's do that. All right, everyone, hit that subscribe button. Join Patrick and I for all of our coverage here at HP Amplify 2024. It's been a great day talking about hybrid work, AI, sustainability, workstations, and so much more. But for this episode, we got to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.